Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, how's it going? Man, today is Friday, I can feel it. I can feel it in the bones. In my bones. It's a good day. It's a good day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, I'm my... <laughs> my body is sore from running yesterday. That's hilarious. That is so funny, like old man sore from running. Granted, I ran four kilometers for the first time in, in uh, more or less half a year. But yeah, the, the top of my thighs and, and the back, like at the lower back where, where that's responsible for rotating. Those two muscles going up the, the lower back and uh, the top of the thighs, they're all like mush. Hey, Yatsuki, how's it going? <laughs> hey. Odd, odd duck oasis. Cheers for the host, man. Thumbs up for you. Thumbs up to you. So today, I'm going to add colors to her. Uh, I'm gonna try to refrain uh, from going into details per se like no zooming I'm gonna work from this zoomed out state uh, add details as I can without like noodling it I think a lot of problem occurs when you zoom in too early especially when there's a loose sketch like this with somewhat undefined light so what I want to focus on is is kind of capturing the major forms of the the body in light and then color variation um, local color variation and then then grading on top grading being uh, harmonizing the colors additionally on top of uh, the what I whatever I established with the brush just to um, just to kind of tighten everything there is something you learn with time the more you uh, finish painting is like, like i mentioned this before but it's the last five percent and the last five percent are tricks and tips that you pick up over the years or would you just like to do to finish your painting usually what those finishing touches are uh, tend to be the signature look of your art not so much I mean oh, clearly building the painting up to that point is also what what separates us as artists but a lot of t time is that last push that gives it flavor hey Dr. Sheldon I remember you already said that I don't know let's start I have established I have established my my, my purpose um, I mean the last five percent is not uh, solely your style but I'll, I'll try to show it I'll try to show it today but I mean some of the style some of the style comes from color palette, obviously. Like you like a certain tone. Um, I, like I choose certain colors because I like the combination of them, right? It's not that I go by the book. A lot of times I go by by feel. What I think is is the best the best so visual solution to to what I want to paint right not so much what's what's theoretically the most accurate decision so in that sense my my palette becomes very much me right because I choose the colors I, I like to choose uh, based on on my taste and combining that with the shapes uh, combining that with how you like drawing things it all adds up right 
but the last five percent i'll try to clarify it the last five percent for me is more is more like the um, like spices on the dish you know and, and different countries have different spices right? so, so certain countries you know like depending on if you put curry or or cinnamon or or um, oregano you're going to drastically change the dish but you've also chosen the ingredients of the dish you also chose the timing of the dish um, the way you cut all the things that you put in the food and so on and so on right so th that's still you but the seasoning on top is is what separates us as well you know so that's how i see it i see it like the last last five percent is like the seasoning like that ties everything together and 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 makes it for what it is and you change that five percent all the time and you can never get to 100 percent perfect painting it's that like at the very end that you really really push it push it as far as you can small adjustments color corrections um, all these little tiny tiny tweaks that that enhances it and you can you can be taught how to do that right you like you gotta add more yellow or so on and so forth but it's very subjective when you come to that point when you when you try to push your painting to the to the finish it's all down to what what you think is missing right or, or you enjoy the color red a lot so you you increase all the red in your painting a little bit more or you adjust it a little bit more hey Kilrathi, how's it going zealin what up hey bruno romanos how's it going so that's how I see it, right? It's it's to put it simple, or not. <laughs> there's no way of putting it simple, but I'll try to explain it, right? So all all these things I'm doing now, right, is is I'm making the painting better. I'm 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 putting uh, shapes down. I enhancing those shapes I'm enhancing the color the behavior of the color the values are getting better like I'm trying to reach towards the end of the painting right now it's it it's it at, at the beginning of the painting I'm building the painting up but but let's say I, I would be I want to want to finish this now you know so everyone thinks differently of how they should finish it you know they are building it up to the point where they can say okay i've done these steps that i like to do i think this is finished now you know so for me this being hey kudos how's it going congratulations kudo at getting your job you're a big boy now whoop whoop So this being, let's say, a dark fantasy series, I want to give it a dark background. That I know I have to add in order for me to call it finished. Hey, Tormod. Gria, what up? <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yeah, man. Congratulations. Is it a big contract? A long one? Short one? Single stab? Hey, Hira Garuben, how's it going? What a nickname. Crazy. Hey, Spirit Dude, how's it going? Welcome, sir. Oh, do you mind, uh, Kuru, do you mind saying for what company? I mean, you. It's usually um, exclusivity cl uh, or NDAs are it doesn't ex exclude a company. You know. Hiraga Ruben. Ruben. Oh, Ruben is uh, 
Red, right? Or is it light? Ruben. No, Ruben means red in Latin, doesn't it? Or Ruben is the base word or uh, origin of red, isn't it? Ruben Lumos is red light, isn't it? Should look good in your resume. That's awesome, man. Hey, more fire. What's the going? Paizo. Ah, sweet. Congrats, man. Yeah, I can see your style fitting there. I think for Paizo, if it's for the... Um, is it Pathfinder Paizo? Uh, I'm assuming you need a little bit more texture because they like their stuff textury, right? But yeah, congrats, man. Paizo. Oh, Morphia, I'm running that bitch like a mother. <laughs> I got the... I got the um, Sore, sore legs too. Sore legs to prove it. All day long, up and down, up and down. <laughs> more fire, more fire. Yeah, so back to my rant so so like I was uh, trying to explain is that we are always working towards that goal right that that checklist of the things that you want to do before you call it finished and and finishing something I mean, you could just say, okay, I'm finished with this, leave it. Uh, but I, I also, <laughs> yes, Rudy, really, there's a rat. It's not really rat. I mean, rat has a negative connotation, right? But ranting, I mean, I mean it as a monologue, yes. Um, I, I, I try to see it as a, my current exhibition. I don't have a exhibit physical exhibition, right? But like a series of work, and uh, and in order for me to to make them all coherent, I'm not using the coherency is not doesn't need to be thematic coherency. What I'm what I. What I mean is, is you can you can draw a robot or a lizard. It doesn't matter. But what the, my idea about the exhibit and the coherency is 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 the steps you take to finish a painting. Like f f as an example, the dark fa dark fantasy stuff, right? I have a dark background. I focus on light. Uh, make sure that the texture is somewhat okay. Uh, <clears throat> and have lots of mood and, and, and thematically I'm exploring right I'm, I'm, I want to do a nasty look in mermaid uh, because I want to go um, in the fantasy a bit darker or evil so in that sense that's like the thematic difference or, or, or coherency rather but that, that that doesn't mean I need to. S that that doesn't mean uh, it's the last five percent. Uh, but with my like idea of the last five percent is I know I'm gonna do uh, curves on top of all of this, so that I uh, so that I, I I will force the color. Uh, whatever colors I have established, that's my style. Or my choosing uh, the the red with the pink with the purple with the green right Th those those are my artistic choices in combination with the shapes which is you know which which I uh, which I, I've designed and I know I'm gonna with curves on top I'm gonna push the colors further 
with the, ba the, the foundation I've already established. I know I'm going to uh, do layer a layer on top of everything and bloom the light in a way that ties all the form together. So I'm, I'm going to make a pass of con uh, like li light consistency. I'm going to hide shapes in shadow. I'm going to push shapes forward at the end based on all the decisions I've done already of what's in shadow, what's not in shadow. I know that I'm, I don't need, I, I'm going to need to be accurate now, it, in, but not super tight. Because a lot of the dark fantasy stuff I've deliberately left loose. Because I don't want to zoom in, I don't want to sit and render my my brains out, right? I want to I want to focus on the design and the mood of of it all. So I know that I I don't need to zoom in really. I I know that all I need to do is is capture the major forms, major shapes, and then a lot of the the pieces will fall together in the very end. And a lot of artists have different solutions to uh, wrapping a painting up, like finishing with the last 5%. Spirited, I don't know what book you're talking about, sorry. Um, but back, back in the days when I was young, <laughs> a couple of years ago, many years ago, um, it was very popular to um, show your steps that you took, uh, especially when forums were uh, alive and kicking. What you did was uh, you made a book. <laughs> oh, damn you, spirited. You made a post with each step, major step of the painting. So from sketch, foundation, um, texture, finished. Um, so you, you could see a lot of major steps from each artist that posted. And I, I found that extremely valuable because, first of all, the artist that posted decided that these are the steps with major changes. Right? So you could see a bit of a, their methodology or, or thought process by choosing these stages to show them as steps, right? And secondly, um, you could clearly see the difference of of wh how their approach was All right so you could see um oh wow they they focused on shadows in that step or wow that the the adding texture really really made a difference and you could see all these you know subtleties happening and it was for me so fascinating um, to to sit and try to reverse engineer. It's like, okay, I really like, let's say, Keikai Kotaki's way of of doing doing shine. Like, okay, so at what stage is he adding shine, and at what stage does he like finish it, right? So that like the armor looks so shiny. How does he get it so shiny? And you and you, whenever you see these steps, like picture steps, you go like, okay, ah, uh, oh, maybe it's color dodge, and you go and try it, and you go, ah, okay, and then, you know, so so people that are really good at art, and that has a significant a style that you recognize, that you go, oh, Jamie Jones, oh, Craig Mullins they all have their own methodology in creating that art to get to those to those flavors to those styles anyone can paint right anyone can 
try to wrap a painting up or chase that last 5%. But only people that are skilled, that, are, that know their own preferences, that have a strong idea or, or understanding of what they're doing, the more you do it, the more you try to wrap a painting up, the more you try to push quality further and further and further, the more mistakes you see and the more you try to patch those gaps. And that's why, I, for example, I always say the last 5% is, is unattainable because you're always seeing something else. Your, your taste always changes, so you want to do things differently. And then all of a sudden, maybe you see a, your favorite artist post a new piece of artwork where him or her have changed style almost completely. And you go, oh, wow, you could do that. And then, then all of a sudden, that's your, your, what you're going to try to do to your own paintings. Or like Rembrandt, how does Rembrandt make the light so vibrant? And then and you tried those many different things. And every time you, you finish a painting, in the back of your head, you go, how do I make those the lights so vibrant like Rembrandt? And then you, you push, 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 and then you say, I can't do anything better. Hey, Henry Pete's art. Thanks for the prime, man. Much appreciated. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. That's smooth. <laughs> hey, Gria. Um, I'll tell you why. One second. Hey, Captain Boats, how's it going? What up? Uh, Henry Peters art. Uh, I one of the places was conceptart.org. Yeah. <laughs> A voodoo breakfast. It can be extremely educational, or every, sometime or one time when you go to the museum and see a painting that really speaks to you. Try to break it down. Try to think. Okay, did they start with a light canvas or a dark canvas? You know, why, how, do, how are, how maybe are they treating the texture mark, brush marks, you know, and all these things, you know, just try to reverse engineer it and you'll see how many little tricks that are going to be subconsciously be added to the brain. Uh, so, Gria. <coughs> The reason why I manually paint the black ground. <laughs> Did I say black ground? <laughs> I'm a stupid ass. Right. So the reason why I paint, well, paint the background manually is because each mark it's slightly slightly it has a slight slight variation and and a lot of times if you do a fill you are removing any variation of that singular pixel value it's all super clean there's no variation it's zero things to bite in So as an example, um, one second, let me just save this, save selection. As an example, let's do a color dodge on top, right? And let's duplicate that a few times. You see what it does to the background. All that variation wouldn't occur if I clicked fill. Obviously, this makes no sense artist or like use, right? This is pointless to show to use. But the fact that that information lies in this black means that any marks I do on top, the 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 distance the singular pixel value will travel from the point where I, whatever I will manipulate it on top, it will have information in a different starting point. So the fact that I, I am, I'm setting up 
I'm setting the the background up for happy accidents, especially due to the fact that I I know I will be painting light on top, and 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 by using the gradient and using the um, pixels that's underneath. I want to have the opportunity to have happy accidents. That's why, for example, you can see artists like Jamie Jones, um, they do a lot of heavy texture work at the very beginning of their paintings. And then they, they leave that information in to almost to the very, very end of the painting. And then they do some accurate, like some couple of adjustments and then it all ties together extremely well and and those small changes on top of all those pixel pixel stack wouldn't occur unless they made those steps so in a way i mean this is because also my my natural painting style is very textural very brush marks and and um, you know it's not super smooth an artist that wants smooth curves and smooth gradients and all this this wouldn't work at all it would mess their stuff up because if i add smooth gradients on top of this dirty background that smooth gradient is not going to be smooth anymore you're going to start seeing a lot of artifacts as a, as an example let's do that let's add a gradient you can see already in the background how how the gradient breaks because it's not a singular smooth uh, background but that's okay because for me the end goal is going to get better because i don't want super smooth background or gradients I want uh, meaty dirty <laughs> meaty dirty the good stuff right and that is my personal choice that's my personal st style right in this instance, in particular, in this instance, because I, I'm doing dark fantasy stuff and dark fantasy stuff. Like if I go back to the to the part where I talked about exhibition or co uh, style coherency, like if you have make an exhibition, you have a th theme that you're doing the exhibition for, right? Like sadness, and then everything is running ink or whatever, and you create different bodies of art, but they all sit within the same scope. So what I do a lot day to day uh, with clients is that I get a lot of different scopes and, and they want, everyone wants designs within their own scope, right? So I got to be able to, to carp, uh, break uh, the theme down or the scope down to understand what they want. And then I can create things within that, um, those, that, that scope, right? So f that's why, for example, dark fantasy, the dark fantasy concepts, they look the way they do. Because I'm setting up specific f last steps, 5% moves. Because I, the, the originally I, I did the dark fantasy stuff because uh, two two reasons. I wanted to play with thematically, I wanted to play with fantasy and not make it standard men in tights fantasy and secondly i wanted to experiment with very unfinished brushwork but with accurate light and uh, i'll show you on artstation and you'll see um which where's where's the first one here the first one you can see, um, these are one of the first ones. You see, I didn't do the black background and, and then it became a fight with edges, constantly refining edges. So I thought, okay, that doesn't work. So let's, let's add, uh, this is the second. 
and I went darker. I was like, okay, I can see, see it working. So then I started making everything dark because I didn't want to struggle with contour. I don't, didn't want to have a perfect edge around everything because the purpose is to have accurate light and sketchy forms that, that sits correct in space within the dark fantasy like theme explorations. Right, so here you obviously see the, the, the sketchiness doesn't work as well because there's definition all around. And this one, I spent a little bit more time, that's why it works, right? So that's the, like, that's the basic idea of, of this dark fantasy and, and having that, those five, last 5% five per percent on, on this series is, is all down to, like, how do I push that aspect? So that's why, for example, for dark fantasy series, I know this somewhat the steps at the end I will do to make it finish, to make it, to push the, the concept as far as I can push it until I call it finished. So the statement at the very beginning of the stream, I said, I will add color variation, I will add um, uh, local ver color variation and harmonize the palette a bit and not zoom in. So I haven't zoomed in once. So it works or, or I fulfilled <laughs> my statement rather. And the idea is that after this stage, where I have established a lot of uh, loose details, a lot of loose uh, brush marks, a lot of straying, happy accidents, the more the tighter I will go, the less work I will need in terms of tightness, because all I need to do is feed in on on all the the juicy randomness in order for me to be able to 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 set it in that scope of dark fantasy if that makes sense i'll show you one more dark fantasy uh, in one more recent ones you'll see where i've played with that concept more and 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 uh, tighten the screws a bit more in terms of light and and form and decision and edges but the principle is the same I, I, I keep evolving the the approach but the approach is is always the same it's about sketchiness within accurate light if that makes sense maybe it doesn't <laughs> maybe I just been talking to myself and everyone is like, what is that man on about? He crazy. You crazy, sir. Next step on this one would be to start adding some some tightness to it, start refining, controlling edges. Um, I think what's there is good enough. Except um, now I'm gonna do one thing that will enhance 
what I put down there further and that being one of the using curves like I said I knew I would be doing to 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 bite in on on uh, what I've already established and like I said about it's the same idea about with the background if the data wouldn't be there I wouldn't be able to manipulate uh, the picture to this extent, right? Because I wouldn't have the data there to 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 to, to bite in on. That's it. Morning warm up finished. Ta colored mermaid and rant <laughs> uh, yeah so i might do a lunch stream we'll see or a weekend stream we'll see um so let's raid someone and we'll see um We'll see, see each other over the weekend, or at least Monday morning for study Monday. What's Art Gun doing? Mm. Let's raid So Much Monsters. Always good music at So Much Monsters. AKA Joe. Joe the man. I hope everyone enjoyed the the rant. Uh, please do click follow on So Much Monsters. He's a great guy, very smart, artistic, everything. Uh, he's a 3D guy though, but man, it, he oozes style. Um, have a great one. Good night if you're in that part of the world. Uh, see you Monday morning, if anything else. Uh, otherwise, maybe over the weekend on some streams. Toodles, thanks for the subs. You guys, fantastic. After the raid, I'll take you to Joe. So hang tight. <laughs>